In this video, I go through the seven things that you need to do when you get a freelance filmmaking gig. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus filmmaking tip. All right, so the other day, one of my former students reached out to me to say that she got offered her first paid filmmaking gig. Yay! And she wanted some advice on how to proceed, what to charge, what questions to ask her client, etc. She had no idea where to start. And after typing a lengthy email to her, providing her with suggestions on how to proceed, I realized that this info would probably be helpful to a lot of you guys and gals out there. So I'm going to share. Here are my seven things that you need to do when you get a paid filmmaking gig. Number one, meet with the client. The very first step you need to take after the client reaches out to you is to ask for a meeting. Don't quote them a rate, don't create a schedule, meet with them first so that you can ask the following questions, which will help you come up with both a realistic budget and schedule. Do they have a specific style in mind? It's really helpful if they know what look they want or if they have a sample video that you can check out to illustrate what they want. Either way, you need to get into their head and find out what it is that they're looking for. This info will help you determine your locations and other budget and schedule details. How long do they want the piece to be? Knowing the length will help you determine how much to shoot and approximately how long it will take to edit it. Where is this video going to end up and who is the audience? Is the video going to be on their website or their social media, or will it be playing for strangers who don't know the brand at all? Knowing this information will help you determine your focus when it comes to the video story, scripting, editing, etc. By the way, you should always know who your audience is before you start any video project. When do they need this by? Knowing this will allow you to work backwards from the delivery date and figure out how much time you have for each step. What are their deliverables? Do they need one quick time for the web or do they need 20 tagged archival versions that they'll be bringing into an online elsewhere? What is their file format that they need and will they be providing a drive for you to put it on? And lastly, and maybe the hardest question you need to ask them in the meeting is, what is their ballpark budget for this project? The reason you want to ask this somewhat difficult question is that video budgets can vary greatly. And if you know that they don't have a lot of money, you want to be able to give them a quote that will both compensate you fairly for your time and efforts and not scare them away. Maybe after hearing this number, you realize that this project is not for you and you can offer to help them find a student or someone just starting out to help them for a reduced rate. In any case, once you get this ballpark number, go back to your studio. And number two, come up with a schedule. The schedule comes next because you're not going to be able to do your budget unless you know exactly how long you're going to be spending on each stage of the project. How many shoot days are there going to be? How long will it take you to edit this three or 30 minute piece? Make your schedule on a calendar app. If you don't already have a calendar app that you love, use plain old Google Calendar. Enter their due date and work back from there. Here's a sample of a micro budget schedule for a 30 second video. Here are the shoot days, here is the edit schedule, and here is the due date. Here is the date the rough cut is due and so on. Notice how there are two rounds of revisions in this schedule, which is a reasonable number of revisions. Number three, come up with a budget. Your budget breakdown is the next step. Again, this comes after the schedule. Write it all up in the form of an estimate that you can turn into an invoice once it's been approved. I use QuickBooks for this. So here's a sample of a budget for the video that you just saw the schedule for. I recommend having a day rate for your cinematography services, and if you own your own equipment, charging a small equipment rental fee, which can all be put on one line, cinematographer slash with equipment. List your equipment on the budget. And when it comes to editing, I recommend charging an hourly rate. 
Professional editors can make upwards of 80 bucks an hour, and those just starting out can go as low as 25. It's up to you to determine your skill level and the time it will take for you to complete their video. And obviously, as you get better, this number can go up. Typically, shoots and edits are both based on an eight-hour day, which should also be specified. You shouldn't be promising that you're gonna work all hours of the day. If you don't protect your work-life balance from the start, you're gonna burn out really fast. Oh, and one last thing. Always ask for 50% upfront and 50% after the final delivery. It's sometimes weeks or months between the time you start a project and the time you deliver the final. And during that time, you're gonna need to eat, pay rent, and buy things like coffee. Lots of coffee. Number four, send your schedule and budget to your client for a sign off. This is exactly what it sounds like. Hit send on that email. Give them a day or two to review the schedule and budget, then follow up with them. If all is good, have them sign the estimate or give you a written okay in the form of an email. Once that happens, invoice for that 50% upfront payment and number five, script it, shoot it. Once your schedule and your budget are approved and you've received that 50% upfront payment, write a script if the video calls for this. Or do your outline or write your questions if it's a documentary. Do whatever prep you need, have them approve the script or questions, then shoot the video according to schedule. Number six, edit it and post it for review. The next step is the edit. Start editing your rough cut. Keeping track of your editing hours in the case that the client keeps asking for changes beyond the scope of your agreement. Once you're done with the rough cut, making sure it's delivered by the date specified on your schedule, upload it to something like Vimeo so that the client can review it. I like to use Vimeo because not only can I password protect it, but Vimeo has handy review tools where the client can type their comments right there on the review page, and they'll appear next to the corresponding time code. Then, once you get your list of revisions from the client, edit the revised cut. Then, once you get feedback for the revised cut, edit the fine cut. And once you get the feedback for the fine cut, edit the final cut. Here's what each of these usually includes. Rough cut includes your basic story laid out. Sometimes it's long or missing b-roll or music. Revised cut is usually shorter than the rough and includes most of the b-roll and music. Fine cut generally has everything in it, including the music and b-roll. The only thing it's missing is an audio mix and color correction. And lastly, the final cut is locked, mixed, color corrected, and ready to deliver to the client. Number seven, deliver your final cut and invoice the client. Lastly, put the final cut on a drive or a server to be downloaded, and once it's out the door, send that invoice for the remaining 50%. Typically, my invoices are net 30, which means a customer must pay within 30 days from the invoice date. And then, do your happy dance, you did it! Also, don't forget to back up the media and the project. I hold on to projects for three years from the delivery date, which seems like a lot, but this is sort of an industry standard. All right, let's do a quick tip. When you're a freelance filmmaker, the years can fly by, and it's easy to forget what you worked on and when you worked on it, which is why I always keep a running list of the projects that I do and the dates that I worked on them. This list is not only handy to have when you're updating your CV, but for other things like taxes, billing, and just your general sanity. So when you start a job, take the time to jot the start and finish date down on something like Mac Notes, so you can whip that sucker out at a moment's notice. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.